So what are some popular myths about Colombia that you should be skeptical of? Hi all, I'm Ezrado and you're watching my travel channel where I talk all things Colombia. Now like any country, Colombia has certainly developed its fair share of misconceptions amongst foreigners ranging from slight exaggeration to downright fallacy. So today I wanted to debunk five common myths or at the very least give my alternative opinion regarding some popular beliefs. So the first myth I've got is easily the most common one so I just wanted to get it out of the way right off the bat and that is that Colombia is an extremely dangerous country. Although this isn't entirely untrue, this would be an example of an opinion that's heavily exaggerated in the cultural zeitgeist. Uh, yes, there are parts of Colombia that uh, should be avoided where you'd very likely become the target of a mugging or something worse. And yes, you probably should exercise caution with your valuables in most places when you're outside in public. With that being said, Colombia is by no means some death wish for tourists like what you may have seen in the media. The thing I'll always say about danger in Colombia is that you can just about uh, be in total control of your safety at all times. In the cases where people run into trouble, I can honestly say that 95% of the time it's because they've pushed their luck a bit and taken a risk. I can even uh, speak from experience with this as the only time I've ever been mugged is when I decided to walk down a dark uh, road in a sketchy neighborhood at night. I knew at the time I was taking a risk and I paid for it. But if you just follow some easy precautions like opting for taxis or Ubers when getting around at night time or not flaunting your valuables too much, you can very easily avoid any kind of trouble. I think this myth is perpetuated a lot by film and TV series. For a lot of people, the most exposure they've ever had to Colombia is Narcos on Netflix and like even if they haven't watched it they might still know that it's set in Colombia and that it's clearly a crime show. Beyond that one though I do tend to notice Colombia pops up quite a bit in film as the super dangerous country where all the dodgy stuff goes down. I think it might even feature in that new thriller movie Missing which I'm actually pretty excited to see. I think I'll go see that tonight actually but won't get on a tangent about films or we'll be here forever. One last thing I'll say on this is that these myths about Colombia's danger don't come from nowhere as the country has had a long history of political unrest including several civil wars plus there was the whole uh, Pablo Escobar thing that really made waves in the media around the world but whilst it's still not a perfect country uh, it really has been several decades since Colombia's been anything near a no-go zone for tourists. Even during the pandemic where crime went up quite a bit I found it to be totally livable as long as you follow those basic precautions. For more advice on precautions and safety measures though, I've done a couple of videos about that already so I'll link those in the description. Anyway, let's move on to the next myth which again is rooted in some truth but I tend to think the claims are again a bit exaggerated and that is regarding how friendly Colombians are. More specifically when people claim that people in X city of Colombia are less friendly than people in Y city. Uh, this is actually something I'd probably hear more from Colombians themselves as opposed to tourists but the whole notion that I was going to have a much harder time getting along with people in a certain city because the people aren't as warm was something I was seriously considering before coming to the country for the first time. Probably the most common claim you'll hear uh, with this is that people in Bogota aren't as warm as most other cities, but I've also heard people speak out against Bucaramanga and other cities as well. Uh, after visiting most of the popular cities though, I can speak from my own experience and say that at least as a tourist, I don't think I notice any difference between cities at all, with one exception and that is the coastal cities. Uh, if you go to say Cartagena, Rio Hacha or Santa Marta, I would say that people in these cities seem extra warm compared to other cities around the country, but I'm not even sure if it's that they're friendlier or if it's just they're more extroverted and livelier. Still, if you're looking to make friends, costeños seem to be extra loyal people, so there is that. I will say though that it's not that people elsewhere aren't friendly and loyal, like I'd still say Colombia on the whole, is a much friendlier country than most places in the world. It's just that the people on the coast are extra, extra warm. I do specifically want to make it clear though that people in Bogota are absolutely still very friendly people on the whole. You've also got to remember that it's really the melting pot of the country in that so many people from other departments move there for work, so even if the myth of Bogotanos being less friendly holds any truth, you're still mixing with a sizable portion of people from around the country there, so it would hardly even matter. All in all though, if there even is any truth to this claim, it's the sort of thing you'd only notice if you're Colombian, and even then mostly just for the people who are coming from the coast. For expats though, don't let this myth dictate where you live, as I can virtually guarantee it will have no effect on your ability to make friends. In fact, I have a friend who's a Bogotana in Australia, and to be honest, I think they might be one of the warmest Colombians I know, so you really gotta take these negative claims with a grain of salt. Even if you do hear advice about the friendliness 
best of a city from an expat rather than a Colombian though, just remember that they may have just been unlucky and had a bad experience with a few people and then given the whole city a bad rap. Obviously this isn't necessarily indicative of what your experience will be like, so just make sure to visit a city for yourself before deciding what you think of its people, rather than putting too much weight on what other people say. Alright, this next one is more just me giving my alternative opinion rather than debunking a myth. And brace yourselves, because it's a hot take. You ready? Okay. Medellin, I think, is just a little bit overrated. Just a little. Just a little. Let me explain. This is a city you will see praised endlessly all over the internet and in real life from both expats and Colombians alike. There are expat blogs about Medellin, there are YouTube channels about Medellin. Whenever a Colombian asks me what my favourite Colombian city is, they're always in shock when I don't say Medellin. This is a city that I've seen described as not only the best city in all of Colombia, but the best city of Latin America. And even when I'm not reading or watching Colombian content specifically, I see this city pop up in lists of top 10 cities of the world sometimes. So after all this virtually unanimous praise for a city that can seemingly do no wrong, you can imagine that my expectations were set astronomically high by the time I'd gotten around to visiting. And well, to be honest, as much as I liked it, I didn't fall in love with it. Full disclosure, the first time I visited, I really didn't visit many of the best parts of the city, and in fact, a lot of my time was spent around some not so nice high density areas. I remember at the time uh, just kind of getting annoyed at how difficult it was to walk anywhere because of the high density of people and vendors and cars on narrow roads with narrow footpaths. So I really discarded the city as majorly overrated. Like even though there were parts of it that I liked, it just never really came close to my experience in Manizales or Bogota for instance. Uh, I did however give it a second chance by revisiting a few months later and my impressions did improve a bit. I had a chance to visit some of the more popular neighbourhoods like Laureles and I explored El Poblado a little more than last time and so now I'm at a point where I'd comfortably say that it's a good city. Uh, I guess this really enforced the notion uh, to me that when it comes to some of the larger cities in Colombia, you really do need to see a good amount of it before making up your mind. Uh, I'd say that's even more the case for Bogota, but thankfully my first introduction there was actually in a nicer suburb, so I was more on board with it from the get-go. With all that being said, I'm still standing by my claim that I think Medellin is a bit overrated, at least when people say that it's the best city in Colombia. A few reasons I give for that. Firstly, I don't think it's the prettiest city by a long shot. I noticed that it seems quite aesthetically homogenous, where it often feels like every building is just either unpainted brick and mortar, or just a drab colour that isn't enough to distract you from the abundance of said unpainted buildings. <laughs> I realise this is meant to be part of its charm, and whilst I'm not going to critique the poorer areas like Comunas for it, uh, which I actually like by the way, I don't really really see why you also have to have this aesthetic almost everywhere else as well. I mean, it's totally fine if you're just visiting, but if you were to live there or stay long term, for me at least, I think I'd get a bit bored of it after a while. There are some areas that escape that aesthetic a little bit, like parts of El Poblado or La Reles, but it's really not enough for me to feel like I've fully escaped it anywhere personally. The same goes for the aforementioned population density. You can definitely escape it in certain suburbs, but I would say on the whole, you do notice that everything just feels a bit more boxed in. Like, I know people complain about the traffic in Bogota, but despite being a larger city, Bogota actually has less population density, uh, and I did feel like I noticed that. The last thing I'd note is that I don't think Medellin is the nicest city from a natural perspective either. The whole city is actually in a valley, so you're not looking down towards pastures, fields, and glaciers stretching out to the horizon like you would in parts of Manizales, but instead you'll be looking up more at the comunas stretching out across the upper regions of the valley. There are some designated areas you can go for a fix of nature, but overall it just doesn't feel like a key part of the city's identity like it is in some other places. So yeah, that was my hot take. I better move on before I start seeing torches and pitchforks at my door though. So for the next myth, let's talk about temperature. Basically, a lot of people seem to think that Colombia has an extremely warm climate, probably because it's right near the equator. Now, it is partially true that you do get pretty hot temperatures year-round, but this isn't everywhere, and in fact, most of the more popular cities you'll visit or live in can range from spring to autumn-like temperatures. I'm sure if you watched a lot on Medellin, you may have heard it nicknamed the City of Eternal Spring, which again kind of annoys me considering there are other cities like Bucaramanga that have a similar climate and you'd have to live in Medellin's shadow for no good reason. But if you like me and prefer cooler temperatures, you'll find Manizales and Bogota regularly hanging around the low to sub 20 degrees Celsius range, so you really do get a lot of choice for the type of climate you like in Colombia. Uh, the reason for this is essentially that many cities have very high elevation where whatever heat you might get from being near the equator is offset by the high altitude. Bogota, for instance, is a bit over two and a half kilometers high, whilst Medellin is about one and a half, so this really does help in eliminating what would otherwise be some unbearable heat for many people. 
There are still, of course, many cities that aren't as high up, like any of the coastal cities, obviously, along with many of the southern cities, like Neva or Florencia. Uh, so you'll find the heat in those places to be a pretty intense. One thing I should mention on this, though, is that even though the high altitude cities are much cooler, you will find the heat to be a lot drier and the sun to be a lot sharper on your skin without any kind of humidity. Just bear in mind that I am only really talking about the very high altitude cities here, like Bogota or Manizales. Medellin and other sub two kilometer altitude cities I find to have a bit more humidity. One thing I can say for absolutely anywhere in Colombia though is that sunscreen is vitally important. I don't use it much in Australia unless I'm going to spend a chunk of the day outside during the summer, but in Colombia you want to be applying it year round. Uh, if you want any guidance with that, you can of course just Google the UV index for the city you're in, and if it's at a 3 or higher then you'll just want to be diligent with it if you're going to be outside for a little while. You might be fine if you're just popping out somewhere quickly, but if you're doing a lot of walking, definitely consider applying sunblock. Alright, the last myth I wanted to cover is something that, to be honest, is mostly true, but just not in every single circumstance, and that is that the price of things in Colombia is miles cheaper than what it is in first world countries. Now yes, as I said, this is true for most things, accommodation and real estate are way cheaper, eating out is way cheaper, getting an Uber or a taxi or a bus or a train is way cheaper, going to the movies is way cheaper, buying an airfare is, well, not necessarily cheaper, which brings me to the point that there are a small number of certain things that you shouldn't expect to pay less for, and in some rare cases you might even be paying more for than back at home. So I'll list a few things that come to mind. First of all, as I just said, you can pay quite a bit by Colombian standards for domestic airfares. From my experience, these prices can fluctuate quite drastically uh, depending on the day and airline you choose to fly with, perhaps even more so than what I've seen in Australia. One day I could be paying a lot less and the next day I could be paying a lot more than what I'm used to. And from the customer's end, it all appears to be pretty random in how it varies day to day. So that's just something to be aware of for domestic flights. Uh, when it comes to international flights, I don't believe those fluctuate as much, but you can still expect to pay similar prices than what you're used to with that. Something totally different though that I found range from equal to more expensive than my home country are video games. Now when it comes to games, Colombia really doesn't have any big national retailer chain that you'll find all over the country like GameStop or EB Games. In fact, there are precious few stores that specialize in games at all. Instead, you'll mostly find games sold in small quantities on the side in those tiny device accessory stores you often see in shopping malls, and if you're lucky, maybe a specialized kiosk that has a bigger range. Either way, because games almost never seem to be bought in bulk for any store, it means that the sellers aren't getting any discount but instead paying the RRP, and then in order to make a profit they have to mark that up further to the customer. So yeah, when it comes to games, I would recommend just buying and downloading them digitally if you're able to. Just to rattle off a few more things that I noticed are just as or more expensive than Australia. Uh, clothes I never seem to save on, and in fact underwear and socks in Colombian department stores seem to be more expensive than what you'd pay in Australian department stores of the same standard. Uh, buying food at supermarkets can be cheaper than Australia, but there are some products that are much the same. And in certain supermarkets, I feel like I'm even paying more. And then I would say when it comes to buying tech, uh, there is a lot there that is much the same as well, like flagship phones or games consoles. That said, there are some exceptions like TVs for instance seem to be insanely cheaper uh, even when you're buying a big brand's flagship. Uh, I don't know why that is, but if you're in the market for a TV then hey, that might be something you want to look into. So yeah, as you can see, not everything is cheaper in Colombia. There are still a few things you'll be paying regular prices for, even though the country is still generally cheaper on the whole. Anyway, I think I'll end this one here. Those were five myths about Colombia that came to mind. So if you're new to the country, I hope I was able to debunk some lies you may have heard. As always though, if you want to see more videos about Colombia, like, subscribe, bell, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao.